Get ready for Tennessee's next game on the hardwood with our Vols matchup breakdown. We preview the Vols opponent and give you Tennessee's keys to victory here on Vol Basketball Fever. Welcome in Vol fans. This is Nathaniel Rutherford here with Vol Basketball Fever. Ready to give you an opponent preview. The first time we've done a video specifically like this. We've had matchup breakdowns for Tennessee during the regular season. But this is a preview specifically for Tennessee's opponent in the NCAA tournament. Welcome in, guys. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're here as well. We'd really appreciate that. Go check out the previous live stream I did on Sunday. I'll put a card in the top right-hand corner up here for you guys to check it out. Subscribe to our podcast while you're here as well. Vol Basketball Fever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, you name it, we're there. So Tennessee's in the postseason. Tennessee's in the NCAA tournament. And guys, this is the time of year where... Any day, any moment could be the last time we see this team on the court. So appreciate and enjoy every last minute you can. Hopefully, though, we get a, at least a couple weeks with this team in the NCAA tournament. The first game Tennessee has is against the Logwood Lancers. The Vols are a three seed in the South region, playing the 14 seed Logwood Lancers. This is the Lancers' first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. So let me give you the lowdown on the Lancers and you know what kind of team Tennessee is facing here for their first opponent in the 2022 NCAA tournament. So as I said before, this is the Lancers' first ever NCAA tournament appearance. This is also only their second ever season above 500 in Division I, and it's their first ever 20-plus win season as a Division I school. Longwood joined Division I back in 2004, so they've been in Division I for almost 20 years now, and they went 1-30 as an independent school that first year, really rough beginnings. When Griff Aldrich was first hired as the head coach of Longwood, they were coming off a 7-26 season the year before, and they'd gone 6-24 the year prior. So winning 13 combined games in the two seasons leading up to Aldrich's first season as head coach at Longwood. In his first year, he led Longwood to a 16-18 mark, surpassing the win total of the first two seasons combined. It'll take him a couple more seasons before he'd get Longwood to this year, where they've gone 26-6 and and 15-1 and in the Big South and just won the Big South tournament, beat Winthrop, who was a really good Big South team, and, and I think the school that most people thought was going to come out of the Big South this year because they'd made the NCAA tournament, I want to say two, maybe three years in a row uh, before this year. But no, Longwood handled their business in the Big South tournament and actually beat Winthrop pretty handily in the championship game. Uh, the Lancers, that was their first season above 500 in conference play since they joined the conference in Big South in 2012. So again, they joined in 2012. This is the first year above 500, and they went 15-1. and They were 9-9 and 10-10 and the two previous years, uh, now 15-1. and The Lancers haven't lost since February 12th, winning eight straight games. If you go back even further than that, they have won 19 of their last 20 games. So they've only lost one time in their last 20 games, and that includes you know most of it. I think almost all of those games have been in Big South play, with maybe one or two before entering the conference play, but 19 of the last 20 games. So they are on quite the uh, win streak and, and quite the hot streak here uh, are the Lancers. Longwood is led by guard Justin Hill, who's a sophomore, averages 14.2 points per game to lead the team. He's only six foot, but he averages almost five rebounds per game. Also 4.2 assists and one and a half steals while shooting 33.3% from three and 42.2% overall. The Lancers leading rebounder is actually a six foot four guard, Isaiah Wilkins, who began his career at Virginia Tech before transferring to Wake Forest and then to Logwood. He was at Tech for the first two years of his career, transferred to Wake Forest, and now in his fourth year in college, he is at Longwood, where he is enjoying the best, best year of his career in college basketball. He's averaging almost 13 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1.6 steals while connecting on 40.5% of his threes. Seems pretty high. Well, he's one of only, I think he's one of like two guys or maybe even three guys on this Longwood roster who shoots at a 40 plus percent clip from three. Offensively, Longwood's very dangerous from distance as they make, as a team, 38% of their threes, which ranks 18th in the country. So they are one of the Best three-point shooting teams in the entire country. They average 8.2 made threes per game. And I think they average, they attempt about 20, a little over 22, 23 threes per game or something like that. Maybe the math is wrong, but I did just then. But the point is, they, they don't shoot maybe as many threes as other teams, maybe even as many threes as Tennessee does. Uh, but they make them at a very, very high clip. They also get to the free throw line a lot. 
averaging 20.5 free throw attempts per game, which is the 45th most in the country. 20.1% of Longwood's points this season have come from made free throws, which is 62nd in the country. So they're, they're in the high end in terms of the percentage of their points coming from free throws. So they can shoot the three really well, and they can get to the line quite a bit, and they do a pretty good job of making those free throws when they get to the line. They've also been really elite at grabbing offensive boards, which is interesting given the fact that the roster makeup, more on that in a second. Uh, they have an offensive rebound rate of 34.1% per Ken Palm, which ranks 20th in all of Division One basketball. So top 20 team in the country at offensive rebound rate. That's very impressive, uh, especially considering they're kind of a small team overall. Defensively, Longwood has been pretty good at getting steals this year, averaging almost eight per game, and they force opponents to turn the ball over 14.2 times per game. So that, that number could be, you know, it's not the highest in the country, but it's still a pretty respectable turnover number for their opponents. Uh, their defensive turnover rate of 20.2% ranks 78th in the country per Ken Palm. The Lancers have been almost as good at stopping opponents from making threes as they themselves are at making threes. Opponents are connecting on just 31.2% of their shots from distance against Longwood, which is around in the top 50 of the country in terms of opponent or in terms of three-point percentage defense. They also don't allow teams to get to the free throw line often. So opponents are only averaging just 14.1% free throw attempts per game against the Lancers. So on offense, they were really good at shooting threes and getting to the free throw line. On defense, they're actually really good at stopping people from hitting threes and stopping the teams from getting to the free throw line. So the two things they do really well, uh, they do both on offense and defense. But it is, you know, it's worth noting that while they've been pretty good off, actually really good on offense and pretty good on defense, a lot of those stats have come against opponents in the Big South. So credit to them for being the best in their conference, for sure. I mean, they're a really good Big South team. Um, but the Big South, from top to bottom, is not a very good conference at all. Uh, per Kim Palm, the Big South ranked 25th among the 32 conferences in Division One this season. Uh, the SEC, where Tennessee is in, uh, for comparison, ranked second behind only the Big 12, uh, Kim Palm. So uh, it kind of tells you a little bit about the, the competition that uh, the Longwood Lancers were facing this season. Longwood was exceptional against the Big South, but again, it's also worth pointing out uh, that Tennessee played two other Big South teams this year and really just easily handled their business. I don't remember if you all remember these games back in December, November, uh, but the Vols played two Big South teams in Presbyterian and USC Upstate. Uh, Vols crushed Presbyterian 86-44, and just absolutely stonewalled USC Upstate 96 to 52. So that's a that's like a both those teams were held to under 55 points, and Tennessee almost dropped 100 on USC Upstate and almost dropped 90 on Presbyterian. So again, definitely handled their business, almost doubled up both those those teams. But again, Longwood uh, better than those two teams. They also beat those two teams this season as well, being Presbyterian 71-70, so close contest, and USC Upstate 85-72. Uh, the Vols, by the way, they're a perfect 28-0 and against Big South teams in program history. And Rick Barnes, as a head coach, is 23-0 against Big South teams. Uh, neither UT nor Barnes have played against Longwood, however, but I, I personally have a hard time believing this will be the game that kind of tarnishes that perfect record. It, it could. Longwood's not a bad team at all. And in fact, they're a team that, if they weren't playing Tennessee, I might root for. It, it, weird little fact here, their head coach was has only been in basketball and collegiate basketball for not even a decade really uh, he actually graduated for from the virginia law school he was at one point a, a cfo a chief financial officer uh, he started a i think a, a multi-million gas and oil company so like he he's been he was in a very different field before he got into basketball he was hired as an assistant at umbc i think back in 2016 and then a couple years later that made that shocking victory over Virginia as a 16 seed beating a one seed in the NCAA tournament and then the next that that off season is when he was hired as Longwood's head coach so just interesting that he had the background he had kind of like a, a, as we mentioned on the podcast Gene Henley my co-host on, on the Vol Basketball Fever podcast uh on earlier this week mentioned Brad Stevens who you know is now a, a one of the um, in the front office I guess of the Boston Celtics also used to coach Butler used to coach the Celtics too uh, he had a different background where he was not involved necessarily in basketball before he became a coach so just interesting that that Longwood's head coach had the background that he does looking at kind of the teams that Longwood's faced this year 
They've only faced one power six opponent in, in college basketball, and that was Iowa. And it was the first game of the season, and it was a 106 to 73 thrashing in the first game of the season. So again, that was first game of the year where teams are just very different from what they were in the first, you know, first game of the year. But if you look at the one team that uh, that Longwood played that was a power six school, it wasn't even close. I- Iowa again dropped a hundred on them in that game. So um, I don't expect Tennessee to drop a hundred. I don't. I don't expect Tennessee to win this one by 33 or you know 30 plus in, in this game. Um, but you know, just kind of some comparison, and also comparison to, to some of the big South teams Tennessee played earlier this year as well. Uh, some of the other losses that they suffered this year, Longwood, uh, in the ranking in Ken Palm, they lost to Western Carolina, which ranks 298th in Ken Palm. That's not a good team. That's that's not a good team at all. Lost to Old Dominion, who's 193rd. Georgetown, who they were not good at all this year, ranked 176th on Ken Palm, and I'm kind of surprised it was that high. Uh, Georgetown was awful this season. And then Abilene Christian, who is 128th, or 129th, excuse me. So all those teams are outside of conference play. They, of course, had one loss in conference play. But those are the ones I wanted to highlight in the non-con play uh, that Longwood had and ended up losing to uh, this season. Additionally, as I mentioned kind of earlier, hinted at, Longwood doesn't really have any size. They don't have a single player taller than six foot seven who plays meaningful minutes. They have a guy who's six foot eight, but he plays like four minutes a game, and I don't know if he's played recently. So mostly, though, they're built of a lot of six foot seven or shorter guys. They have three guys who are about six foot seven, but they're not like overly big. I think the biggest one is six seven two twenty five maybe. Yeah. So Tennessee with Urush Plashik, with John Fulkerson, with Brendan Huntley Hatfield and Jonas Adu definitely have a size advantage. And even Josiah Jordan James is about the same size as their biggest guys out there. Uh, so James is not going to be overmatched at the four going to be against any of their fours or fives because he's going to be about the same size as as Longwood's fours or fives. So because of that that lack of size, their two-point shooting on offense and their two-point uh, field goal percentage defense, they're both pretty bad. Both are in the 200s. And in fact, their, their two-point field goal percentage defense, I believe, is almost close to being in the 300s. So not very good in the interior. That's why they've been such a, a three-point heavy offense this year because that's where their strength is. They don't have the size to battle down low. They don't. They hardly block any shots. They, they block like two per game on defense. So they were a much more guard-oriented team, which, again, those are more dangerous come March. So there's there's definitely reason to worry about this team as we don't worry too much about it. Uh, because actually, as I said earlier, despite the lack of size, they actually do a really good job of rebounding, really good on, on offensive boards, and they're not bad on defensive rebounding either. They're in the top 100 in the country in total rebounds per game, which when you look at their size, you think that's pretty shocking, and it is. Uh, so that's, you know, they do a better job with that than you'd expect. So all in all, you know, Longwood is a really good Big South team, probably one of the better Big South teams we've seen outside of Winthrop maybe in the last few years. But I don't know that they're built to beat a team like Tennessee or to maybe, you know, built to make a run in the NCAA tournament. But again, this is March. Anything can happen. Literally, we, we have seen a 16 beat a one. We've seen several other 16s. Uh, seeds get close to beating ones we've seen plenty of 15s beat twos and we've seen plenty of 14s beat threes so it can happen so i don't expect it to happen but again anything can happen longwood is a, the, had the best offense in the big south which is impressive especially when you consider how good winthrop's offense has been uh the past couple of years and this year as well but again a really good big south team shouldn't really stand too much of a chance against this tennessee squad in particular who again handled their business easily against the other two big South teams they played and has handled their business against much better opponents, frankly, over the last, you know, month uh, than Logwood. So as long as the Vols defense doesn't just suddenly forget how to guard the three and if UT's posts just suddenly, you know, don't just suddenly forget how to play and, and can, you know, do well against a smaller opponent, Tennessee should advance the next round. Let's just call what it is. Tennessee, I expect to shoot okay from three in this game. They've been shooting really well lately. Uh, again, though, Longwood has a pretty good three-point defense. Even if Tennessee isn't making points from three, again, they should be able to dominate in, in the post. And I imagine Kennedy Chandler and Sakai Ziegler being able to take the guards off the dribble, use some pick and rolls, or you know, just using some screens and stuff to get to the basket even. I, I think Tennessee should be able to win this game by 15, 20 points. I don't expect a 30, 40 point blowout or anything like that, like Iowa did against uh, Longwood, but I, I do expect Tennessee to win this game and then move on to play the winner of Colorado State, Michigan. But again, anything can happen. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this game and kind of moving forward for Tennessee and the NCAA tournament. Please leave your comments down below. And let me know if you enjoyed this format. I'm just kind of previewing the opponent, not, not really looking at the matchup 
as, as much as I have in, in the SEC games where I looked at kind of both sides of it, uh, the opponent and how Tennessee matches up with them. Just going to give you an opponent preview looking ahead at you know what Tennessee is going to face in the NCAA tournament because that's the case if you'd like this format. That's how I'll do the next one for hopefully when Tennessee goes to the next round and then hopefully when they go to the Sweet 16 and then hopefully the Elite Eight and then hopefully to the Final Four. I don't know if they will, but I would be happy to keep making content like this into April. I would be thrilled. So, Vol fans, thank you all so much for tuning in. Or if you're a Longwood fan, thank you for tuning in and, and seeing kind of a breakdown of your team and let me know if I got anything wrong or, or if you have anything else you want to add. So please comment down below, like this video, subscribe to the channel while you're here, and please subscribe to our podcast as well. It's Vol Basketball Fever. And we're also at Vol Hoops Fever on Twitter and Vol Basketball Fever on Facebook. Again, I'm Nathaniel Rutherford for Vol Basketball Fever. This has been a Vol Opponent Breakdown video.